great. So yeah. <clears throat> we'll just wait like two, three minutes until people have time to join in. But for everyone else, um, welcome to the Shopify meetup. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Zane. And thank you, Anna, of course, from the team. Um, we are going to start in another two minutes um, and we'll hit it off just to allow some more people to join in. For all of you um, to be aware, this is a recorded session. So for anyone who wanted to make sure to attend and come see the event, but for some reason wasn't able to, it will be recorded and it will be um, shared on YouTube as well. So we can have access and you will have some goodies coming through later with Tebby. So there's some, some good news coming across um, for you guys staying on the webinar and uh, yeah, and seeing what's gonna happen. And um, yeah, I think we're just going to wait on another one minute and then ready to start it off. Great, maybe for um, um, you attendees or, or all of us guys, um, as long as the round um, stays small, so depending on how many people will join later, we can allow um, questions in between. So we don't necessarily have to wait till the end, but if we cross a lot more attendees, it might get a bit messy. So we might limit questions to a later stage, but for now, I think we're, we're good, we're fine. And, um, yeah, on, on my side, I would suggest um, we will be starting now. Uh, it's naturally that people will join in or, you know, opt in, opt out. So first of all, again, welcome to the official Shopify meetup in Dubai. Today, we're talking about the um, demystifying the payment solution. So and what does that mean? A lot of you have heard about uh, buy now, pay later. What, what is it actually? Um, so we're going to, to give you some information on what is a buy now, pay later solution on Shopify in the UAE. How does it work? How can it actually boost and benefit uh, for your business? And uh, apart from that, we're just going to give a bit more clarification and tips and tricks and uh, open to your question rounds later. But as naturally and as usually in our tradition uh, with the Shopify events, we definitely are wanting to highlight Gary and welcoming Gary from Shopify. And Gary is um, hitting off. Uh, Anna, maybe you can move to the next slide. So here, uh, just to give you an overlook, uh, over the agenda, what's going to happen over the next, um, yeah, let's say 45 minutes. Um, we're having Gary having an introduction on Shopify, uh, giving us some news on the region, some goodies that we normally here in the UAE would like to hear. And then followed by the panel, which is going to be myself, uh, co-founder of Creative 971, uh, Gary uh, from Shopify, and then we have Zain Khan with us from Tabby. So welcome to Zane and thank you for all of you being here. And of course, we give the room also to our attendees. So please feel free over the uh, raise your hand Q&A function to raise your points, questions, concerns. We're here and monitoring everything to help you guys out. And yeah, without further ado, I will um, be quiet and I will hand over the floor to Gary to start with his insights on Shopify and the UAE. Perfect. I'll just get um, my screen shared very quickly for you folks, and we will be able to go from there. Maybe a fun fact of, of those who, of those of you who don't know, Gary has been with us years now. He actually traveled for the initial Shopify events pre-COVID. He used to be live in person with us, and yeah, hopefully sooner or later we can have him back <laughs> back with us in in live, and yeah. I'll, I'll leave the floor to you now, Gary. Hear me okay? Because for some reason, when I shared my screen, it uh, it canceled my audio. Um, so I'm not sure what was happening there. Uh, let me try it again. Hopefully it'll work this time. 
Yeah, in, in case I think Anna has your presentation, we might be able to share it then as well. Um, hopefully you can all see that okay. Um, I think I just had to unclick a little um, button, so we should be good to go. Um, so do you guys, do can you I guys just get a... Do you guys see the screen? Because I don't see your screen. I, okay. Yeah, it's yeah. loading and then it just, uh, yeah, it's black. Yeah, it's not it. sharing. Yeah, now it is. Now we can uh, see it. Can okay. you see it? it can it, our, our attendees see the screen as well? Just type in the messages in the chat, maybe a one or a yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great. Perfect. Great. Um, sorry about that. We got we got there in the end, though. Um, so for anyone who has uh, potentially uh, been to one of these before and heard me speak, it'll be very much uh, along those veins where I'll give a little introduction to Shopify and also about some of the, the data in, in relation to the United Arab Emirates and um, adding in a little bit of data around Saudi Arabia uh, this time as well. Um, so it will be in around 10 minutes, maybe less, um, all going well for yourselves. So. Just introducing um, Shopify. So the idea of Shopify is it's one platform that looks at every channel across any device in terms of e-commerce. It's a cloud-based uh, multi-channel um, commerce platform designed to help businesses of all shapes and sizes run their business. Um, Shopify is more than just an e-commerce solution. What it does is it aims to play a more strategic and central role in your day-to-day -day business and helping you run it smoothly, more capably, and hopefully achieving more success um, as you go. So we do, our aim as a company is to try and make running your business, running your commerce business as easy as possible. So every iteration and release that we try and do is all geared towards you, our merchants, and trying to make your life as easy as possible and hoping to equip you with all the tools and resources to allow you to successfully scale and run your business. Um, I've done this slide before. There's always a little addition to it every time we, we come. Um, but it's just to give a very quick glance at Shopify and some of the key figures around it. The company is still relatively young. It only started launched in 2006. Um, currently, we actually have over 10,000 employees um, based around the world. I think in November when I was here last, we had about 8,000 employees. So, you know, there is a substantial growth in, in the company as well, um, even in that short space of time. Um, we've total sales on the Shopify platform since its launch is over 450 billion. Um, to give you an idea, when I was here in November, that was 400 billion in terms of US dollars. So it, it took from 2006 right through to November 2021 to reach 400 billion. And within a couple of months after that, there's another 50 billion. And one of the important factors there is um, the Black Friday, Cyber Monday type of thing, and the holiday period across the world as well since, um, since I was here last. Uh, we also have over 8,000 apps in our app store available to, to merchants to utilize and, and to hopefully uh, help their business grow. Um, and we have merchants all over the world across 175 countries. So we have Shopify is being utilized in all corners of the world by, by merchants of all, all sizes. Um, <clears throat> the goal of the company is to support small businesses. And over the last couple of years, pandemic behavioral changes have led to more online shopping. Um, but Shopify's Mantra and mission has stayed the consistent and stayed the same, which is to help make commerce better for everyone. Um, in 2021, we did make a lot of efforts to allow businesses to own their own brands. So in terms of creating their own websites, their own stores, um, reach more buyers, build strong relationships with their customers as well. So they could increase uh, brand loyalty across time. And the, the buy now, pay later solution that, that Zane and the folks will talk about is a key element of being able to do that. Um, so we're constantly trying to level the playing field for entrepreneurs across the world to give them access to all the, tour, to the tools and resources that they could utilize to, to grow their business. Um, in terms of global, like the focus on Shopify 
uh, right now because it is a North American company originally. But the focus of Shopify, because its size, is going more and more global. So more and more towards solutions that allow businesses from anywhere to sell globally, to cross markets, everything like um, like that. Very, very quickly, uh, just to show you the growth in the number of stores of Shopify in the UAE and Saudi Arabia since 2017. Um, you can the green here. Hopefully, you can see it and the. Um, purple, the purple is Saudi Arabia and the green is the United, the United Arab Emirates. And you can see both of those um, regions are going upwards. They're trending upwards year, year in, year out. And you can see through 2020 and 2021, um, there has been like substantial growth in the number of stores that have launched. Lots of factors and the pandemic, pandemic being a significant one forced a lot of companies who hadn't got to that stage yet to think about selling online to actually embrace it much sooner than they they probably ever thought they would need to. And what that's done is it's allowed businesses to flourish and to sell to customer segments that were not easily accessible before when it was maybe just a brick and mortar option or whatever it might have been. So you can see very quickly in 2017, there was only 221 Shopify stores in the United UAE. And as of Q1 2022, there's actually 5,388 stores, which is a significant increase in only a couple, five years. Um, and the same trend is happening in Saudi, where you have, I think the number isn't there, but I think it was like 20 something um, stores. And then right through, there was um, uh, I'll, I'll edit this when you get the slide so it shows the figures, but there was 1,000, I think, 700 stores in the in Saudi as of Q1 2022. Um, so you, the growth is substantial across these regions. And what's that do, what, that ha what happens with that is the more people that embrace Shopify, the more companies and the more uh, resources that become available because that growth is beneficial to everyone um, from a Shopify perspective, from a merchant perspective, from a, a customer, from your customer perspective. Um, and finally, just to very quickly, just to show some of the apps that are really, really popular um, in your areas. Uh, these are all available on the Shopify app store. Um, and these are just some of the ones that are that are quite popular across the, the Middle East. Um, so you've got the product reviews apps, uh, Super Lemon, uh, which is a WhatsApp support one. Um, you've got two versions of email marketing and SMS, which is Clavio and Shopify's own Shopify inbox. Um, because social is so popular, you've lots of stores in, like trying to show their, their social feeds across their websites. And one of the most popular ones uh, for doing that is the Insta feed, Instagram feed. Um, app as well. And then also finally the customer privacy app, which shows a, a banner and, and looks at kind of the cookies and the different things like that that show up on your on your store. When this deck is shared with all the attendees afterwards, each one of these images are actually clickable, which will redirect you right through to the to the app store as well, just ease of ease of access, hopefully. Um, so I tried to be as quick and I hope I didn't, I've had this speaking very fast, so apologies if I have. Um, but if there is any questions on any of that, feel free to ask as we get to the Q&A stage. Um, but without further ado, I'll we'll move into the uh, buy now, pay later um, discussion. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Gary. And uh, we'll, we'll of course share the, the presentation as well with everyone attending or every one of those who registered and were not available to join us. Um, yeah, so we're moving over um, back to Anna's screen and then we're actually starting with our panel. So um, Anna, if you can go to the next slide, please. Yeah. Um, okay, so everyone, so hello, this is Anna speaking and um, thank you so much for being here in our Shopify meetup today. So the first question that we have, this is actually a compiled most frequently asked question that we are receiving from the customer, business owners, merchants with regards to the payment solution and the buy now pay later. So first, the question is, what is a payment gateway? So Julia, if you could provide us more clarity about it, please. 
sure. So I think one of the most questions once the business is open and once, you know, Shopify merchant owners, or, or maybe they already have a Shopify account or you have a Shopify account, but you might not have business license or a bank account and often comes the question, so what is a payment gateway? So the payment gateway sits actually between your Shopify website or any other e-commerce website and your um, bank account. So what it does, it facilitates payment, accepts payments uh, on all sorts of credit and debit cards um, and allows the international transfers coming through your Shopify store. Now, as a payment gateway, naturally, we normally have give you some examples in the UAE um, since last year, August. So August 2021, we received massive news on um, the major payment provider called Stripe um, being in the region. Now Stripe is of course the most preferred uh, payment provider solution. Why? Because Stripe globally has an agreement with Shopify where it actually is enabling Shopify payments. So now many people have asked us, can we do multi-currency checkout? Can we do Apple Pay? Not yet. <laughs> and I'm saying not yet because sooner or later Shopify for sure will also um, you know, look at our region to enable these parts. But sometimes it's as well, you know, in theory, it is nice and it is great to have, but we're yet you know, to await the actual implementation. So yes, Stripe would be one of the major payment gateways. And um, I think in terms of what a payment gateway is, it will hopefully do, do the job. I think I'm already talking about the next topic if I'm not sure, but yeah, we'll, we'll give you another, the next sure. question. Um, um, everyone, guys, I uh, just want to remind that please feel free to use our chat, shoot us some question, interact with us. We have the perfect cert sets of experts here with us that could literally provide you the actual explanation and clarity on those points. So um, we'll proceed in the next question. Okay, what are the recommended payment providers here in the UAE that Shopify work with? So I think, Gary, this is the best question that you could provide more explanation, please. Please, I'll just um, share a very quick link into uh, the chat here as well for anyone. Um, so this link actually will bring you to a page that shows all of the, the payment gateways that are available uh, for the UAE. Um, and there's, there's a mix of what we refer to as um, direct and um, external providers. And what I mean by that is a direct payment provider is a form of payment that is included in the Shopify checkout. So think of this from the perspective of your customer working through this, your store, picking a product and, and going to purchase it. They go right through the checkout and pay for the product without ever leaving your Shopify store. So it's, it's built in, it's an immersive experience and a, probably a more natural and uh, customer experience um, for those folks. Um, but when a, with an external provider, what that actually means is when they get to the payment stage of the checkout, they are temporarily redirected to an external gateway that's that's held elsewhere. Um, and then once that payment is completed, they are redirected back to uh, the Shopify checkout to show that the transaction had went through. There is a mix of gateways and different things. What I would say is there's no definitive list out there at the moment um, publicly in terms of which ones are external and which one are direct, but you can test these gateways within your admin, do different things and see which ones work best for your business. And I would never, you know, Stripe is, is one of the most popular ones, but there is different gateways and different payment providers that work for businesses of all shapes and sizes. So it's important to consider what's the best for you in terms of maybe transaction fees or the gateway or whatever it might be um, and see which one works best for your business needs. I Thank think you so much. Thank you, yeah, Gary. I think I have something to add. So first of all, I've seen at, at Jatin or Jatin asking a question on the Shopify payments. So as of now, as I mentioned, Shopify payments are not yet active in our region. So if you click on the link that Gary shared, it shows you what payment gateways can work in the UAE. 
And as I mentioned, Stripe is just one of them. I'll give you one great example on, um, let's say if you're in Kuwait or you want to enable Kuwaiti dinar, for example, your best payment gateway would definitely be TAP, which is T-A-B or T-A-P. I think Anna, we can share that reference as well. Um, oh. We have we have the situation that with Kuwaiti dinar, it's a different, um, you know, like it's a three, um, after the dot, we have three decimals. So I think that is to be considered. So, you know, some payment gateways will take a month, monthly charge and a transactional charge will be much less on an on a actual transaction cost, whether other payment gateways don't charge you a monthly fee and they will be a little bit higher on the actual per transactional fee. I think that depends not only on your business structure, but sometimes maybe on, on what is you know, easily approachable and what is your long-term goals for the company. It doesn't, you know, like short-term, probably any payment gateway will help you, but what are you trying to reach, right? And that's why there's diversification for what regions you want to cater it to, for what your business is doing. Is it a service business? Are you selling cookies? You know, there can be a gazillion of different options that will then foster the better payment gateway um, guarded to that. And yes, we can definitely help you to understand which payment gateway would be, you know, the best for you to choose. Um, I think, Hossam, I see the question, is there a chart that shows usage comparison of payment gateways? PayPal seems like the most used global. I think, Hossam, that's a very good question. Thank you for, for sharing that. Um, we don't have a chart um, of the most used payment gateway, at least not for the UAE and the region. Um, I think that's very specific to the platform. So I'm not sure if, Gary, you have anything on, on Shopify's end. Uh, there wouldn't be anything um, there. Um, th there might be some like external gathered data away from Shopify that that pulls from the the existing stores in the region. So I can I can have a look and and send that on afterwards if I find anything. Yeah, great. I think for some maybe for you to know, um, since Stripe is open, they had more than ten thousand applications in literally one day. So we see a large um, transactions going there. What we mainly came across when working with Shopify stores and as obviously leading Shopify agency here, we came across mainly on pay taps. So a lot of people have used pay taps. They've used before pay for it. Pay for it became Amazon payment services. So obviously also their regulation to onboard became a bit more difficult. But why Stripe? Because Stripe lets you actually within normally 48 uh, you know, to 72 hours onboard and be live if you have a business account and business license and most of the other payment gateways usually take two to three weeks to implement and to bring you up and up to speed. Um, PayPal Hussam um, is a solution, but here in our region a bit with care. Why? Because uh, a lot of people try to implement their personal PayPal account in Shopify and that does not work. And I'll tell you why, because if you're operating a business in the UAE, uh, PayPal obviously being monitored, they will ask for your trade license. Can you not provide them a trade license or a valid business account on PayPal? Your amounts collected over on PayPal will be frozen. And yes, we have, we have had people with amounts of over $25,000 in PayPal that they were not able to pull out because of licensing issues, not the correct applications on, on PayPal. So please do not connect your personal PayPal account, uh, refrain from that at any point. If you need an easier solution and a quicker payment gateway onboarding, I suggest you definitely go with uh, Stripe, as I mentioned, because this is, I think, the largest, most mainstream and most platform friendly um, payment gateway if you need a quick solution for payments. Um, and then JTIN also for the um, UAE, for the Shopify subscriptions in the UAE, there is a developmental certain workarounds. Um, as of now, we cannot use apps like uh, Recharge, for example, Recharge is a Shopify app that allows uh, subscriptions. Um, those are only uh, restricted to Shopify payments. So if you are in a region where you can use Shopify payments, then you can use Shopify subscriptions. But most of the solutions you will find in the Shopify app store will purely be restricted to Shopify payments. So as of the moment, there are workarounds. Um, Anna, maybe you can drop the link of Raw Coffee Company to show you how we would solve such a case on subscriptions, but it is not quickly done over an application. So maybe um, JT and Anna can share that with you. And um, Ulviaya, 
I hope I'm not butchering your name. Uh, Apple Pay is available in the UAE. Yes, very much available. Um, but Apple Pay is not available for Shopify because also this will be enabled with the solution of Shopify payments, which is not yet active. Um, and yes, Jatin, I saw your follow-up question in the chat. So Anna will share the information on Raw Coffee Company. We'll let you explore a bit, click through, and then maybe we can book you know, an, a call separately to help you through that. And um, there is another, Stefan, send us a message onboarding in UAE with Amazon. It's just a nightmare. Yeah, so guys, here you get actually um, real, um, real review and real points um, of users. So thank you, Stefan, for sharing that totally with you. I mean, you know, the payment providers obviously do get a lot of applications as well. Uh, we've seen that as well, naturally, with any of those. Um, so for small shops, Stefan, again, I would suggest you on the Shopify dashboard when you're logged in in your Shopify store, go over to payments, go over to apply Stripe and try your luck over there. Um, I know it's usually um, a bit more difficult, but in terms of onboarding Shopify uh, payments immediately, this is the reason why Shopify has partnered with Stripe in order to provide that solution. And we know, you know, infrastructure wise, it is not yet 100% built out for us here in the region, but that's why Stripe will give you a better experience. So I would uh, suggest you try that and, and give it a go. And um, I just want okay. to, yeah, mm -hmm. there's too many questions coming in, which I would love to entertain now, because before we go into the buy now, pay later, um, just mm -hmm. I will take Mohammed's and Olivia's um, two messages here, um, and then Anna, we move forward with the next question. So Mohammed asks, um, just want to understand, would there be any reason to use payment gateways like Stripe, Paytabs when Shopify becomes available? So Mohammed, yeah, yes, exactly. When Shopify payments become available, Shopify payments are powered on Stripe. That's why we're, you know, suggesting already a lot of people to go to Stripe because the moment Shopify payments will be available, there will be a huge buzz in the market and all those thousands of stores that Gary showed you that are on Shopify in the UAE will sooner or later hit out to uh, Stripe and make their way to have Shopify payments available. So if you already have a Stripe account before that happens, um, you are more likely to be on the safe side to be an early adapter using Shopify payments. Having said that yet, it's not announced. Shopify hasn't given any dates, any timelines, unfortunately yet. So we will still have to sit, uh, sit tight and hold. So I think Stefan has just answered your question. And uh, Olivia, Anna will take your email and we'll book a call, of course, afterwards. So thank you for that. And yeah, and I think let's move forward with our questions because Zane is eagerly waiting on the buy now, pay later solution to show you <laughs> the true power of increasing your conversions on your Shopify stores. Okay, thanks, Julia. So our next question is, what is the difference between direct and external payment providers? I think also Gary had a quick review or overview that he discussed earlier about this question. So if you have anything to add about this, Gary, please feel free to clarify. Uh, no, all good. I kind of covered both of those in the, the one question earlier. Okay, perfect. So next question, when can we mean the merchants, the business owners expect the money in our bank account? I, I, I believe this is the perfect question for Zing. So please take over, Zing. Sure. Um, so I think, look, uh, with regards to when can you expect the money in your bank account, it really varies based on the commercial agreement that you negotiate with your payments provider. Uh, like, so at Abby, for example, who I can speak for, uh, you know, we do have multiple options uh on the commercial side but typically it is once a week we do go as often as t plus two t plus one uh t being the transaction date so if it's t plus one you get paid the next day after the transaction and so on um so yeah i think you know um, that's a conversation that you should have with any payments provider uh depending on the cash flow requirements but do keep in mind uh that if they give you a longer payment cycle you could essentially get a discounted rate for processing that payment from them. So, yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much for that, Sane. So we'll move on our next question. So what is a buy now, pay later option and how does it work with payment gateway and on Shopify, Zane? 
uh that's pretty cool um so yeah first off you know thanks for having me here guys and for putting it together um you know uh julia and the team at create nine so creative 971 have been doing some good stuff on shopify so finally be here to share that uh, good to be here to share that mission um so with regards to buy now pay later specifically uh you know i think uh, a lot of you might be aware of the option it you know very hard to not come across that in the news nowadays um so buy now pay later specifically is a way for you to put money in the hands of your consumers uh without any catch right so if you think about how payments have progressed across across the globe a very consistent trend is the fact that uh debit card usage has surpassed credit card usage right uh and that basically means consumers do not are rather not opting for mechanisms of credit when it comes to buying stuff and that's a problem for commerce right because credit helps commerce in general right because as i said it puts money in the hands of your consumers so that they may spend more every time they visit you and so on now the moment consumers move away from adopting credit cards that's a problem right it's a good thing for consumers but a problem for businesses and that's where you see buy now pay later kind of step in uh, and what they essentially do and that applies to tabby as well is democratize the credit and remove the apprehensions behind customers uh you know uh, the customers have when it comes to credit cards typically so what i mean by that is uh you know uh buy now pay later is essentially a payment method uh enabled by credit so it allows customers to split their payments into four interest free purchases or three interest free purchases and so on uh and the key factor here is interest free right um without it effectively comes without any charges to consumers mostly in the gcc at least and they also work for debit card consumers right so i as a debit card consumer can come on to check out use buy now pay later uh, you know and still uh, get credit and pay in interest free installments now largely as a segment buy now pay later is geared towards uh, making the checkout smooth for the consumer so it should not be a long credit card application for example uh it should be easy to understand that's why you have bnpl so tabby for example always markets it as a split in four interest free payments right so when you go to our checkout option it'll always say four interest free payments with tabby uh why because the customer should know that it's exactly four installments of 25% each um and you know with regards to bnpl specifically you'd find at least on the western market a lot of payment gateways offering that uh, as an additional payment alternate payment method in their suite of offerings in the gcc we work with a lot of you know locally preferred payment gateways like payta uh, paytabs is not yet live but network international tap teller uh, hyperpay in saudi uh, and so on right um on shopify specifically i think you know the call this webinar is kind of timely because we are actually we've just had our shopify app approved uh, uh in the region uh so you know a signs of shopify doubling down on the market thanks to the adoption they've seen um uh, and yeah we'd be very very soon we'd be on that link that gary shared previously um so yeah until then we operate as a custom app uh ie a custom app you can you know download outside of the payment stack as a you know uh uh but yeah now that we are live on shopify it should become fairly easy for you to take it live so we're still undergoing a pilot for i think uh, the first 50 merchants post which it becomes publicly available on the marketplace um so yeah that's about it on buy now pay later um uh, happy to answer any questions on this i see already a few popping up uh, uh there's one from ismail i think we'd have uh, a few uh you know uh questions geared very specifically to that so Yeah, but I think in the meantime, uh, Azar has a question. Uh, Julia, if you don't mind, I think we can answer that. Sure. Uh, so Azar, I think you know this is my bad if I missed uh, giving you a sense of that. The key advantage of buy now pay later is that you, as a retailer, still get paid up front, right? So while the customer gets to split their purchase into equal installments or whatever, to you, it's just like as if it was a debit card or a credit card payment because you get paid in full. So the BNPL assumes the risk of collecting from the consumer later on. Yeah, and I think also that would be the question: who, who, um, you know, who is in responsibility, who is in charge, who will run after who for which payment? So you, as the merchant, are on the safe side, and that's I think the beauty and the nice thing of why uh, Zayn uh, and Tabby, not not Zayn, but Tabby, will be on the slide with Gary in the next Shopify meetup because mm -hmm. it does enable so much. And also, Jaitin, I think to your question earlier. 
um, on tabby and what can it help um, a lot of times because a buy now pay later in that case is a sliced payment so it will help increase basket size this is what we usually see you know especially in the pandemic the the basket size went down we were up at 800 900 dirham per basket average basket volume we went down to around 100 dollar which is 370 to 400 dirham per basket order um, on an average on on at least the merchants how we came across in the consumer retail and f &B. but what we naturally see as well plugging in tabby and allowing let's say an item that would naturally cost you a thousand dirham to break that down into four payments which is a 250 dirham for example it makes it very much digestible for a lot of people um what tabby did as well as a solution provider and that's why we partnered up with tabby as well is they have their own application so you can literally download and browse who all is using tabby um, it's a beautiful thing because it allows you and your customers, you know, to also, you know, be co-promoted over in their app. And there is some some cool, some bigger brands. So maybe Zane, if you can name like two or three of the, the famous uh, Tabby customers here that people could relate to. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think, you know, um, we've seen buy now pay later pretty much become the fastest payment method, uh, fastest growing payment method in the globe. Uh, and I think this region is pretty much leapfrogging ahead and ahead to, you know, match up to markets and in some measure even outperform there. So while Tabby and BNPL itself is just two years old in the market till date, uh, a lot of that adoption for buy now, pay later by businesses and consumers alike happened during the pandemic, as Julia pointed out, right? Uh, now, given the need as of today, we work with seven out of 10 regional retail conglomerates in the region. So some of the brands that use us as of today include, uh, you know, uh, in furniture brands like Ikea, Ace Hardware, we're going right down to fashion. You have folks like Shein, uh, you know, uh, Bloomingdale's, Level Shoes and so on. Uh, and, you know, it's really, you know, an industry wide adoption. Anyone and everyone looking to combat price sensitivity amongst consumers in the market, anyone wanting to move away from discounting and cashback has really jumped on the bandwagon. Um, so yeah, you know, we work with guys like, uh, Marks and Spencer offline, online, uh, and the list is over 3000 long. So I won't bore you guys with the name, but, you know, just to give you guys a sense of the kind of brands adopting the service, we have everyone from Adidas to Under Armour to luxury players like Christian Lumbaton that recently came on board as an exclusive partner, essentially leveraging, uh, the benefits of buy now, pay later to grow their business in the region. Thank you, Zen. And I think it shows you as well, like, you know, it could be, I mean, IKEA has single priced items up to what, nine dirham, for example, um, doesn't mean that you have to slice payments of nine dirhams, but um, it means, you know, the you can have smaller items, but let's say if people are able to shop more and spread the payments, they rather, you know, go on thinking about, um, you know, this, you may also like cross or upsells. They actually do work a stronger point here because you can really like leverage and make sure to get most of out of your purchases and, and you know, promotions as a merchant. I think um, to come back maybe to Ibrahim's question quickly on any negatives in using buy now, pay later. I think the negatives are a bit more on the customer side to manage their cash flows and you know stay on top of these parts. Yet I believe looking at a buy now, pay later, it's still more um, consumable because let's say if you wouldn't do that on a buy now, pay later, you would use a credit card. You would easily get you know in this credit card trap where you you know continuously keep your monthly payments but each other month you want to add more payments so with uh, tabby that's limited to four payments i believe maybe then you can give us the the updates of what does a customer actually able to choose when choosing tabby like what are the repay methods and how would you ensure that they are repaying as a customer to the merchant of, or to you i mean the risk goes over to you but how are you ensuring that journey maybe that's would be nice to hear as well yep absolutely um so yeah i think you know as you rightfully as you rightfully pointed out, there are a few factors uh, that play into, uh, you know, whether consumers actually are benefiting from this or not, right? So on one end, every buy now, pay later on Tabby included localizes to each market, right? So for example, in Saudi, you have these cards called Mother Cards, which is a, Mother is a locally run card scheme. And more than 80, 90% of online transactions actually run on mother cards, right? So it's, it becomes imperative for a buy now, pay later to localize for each market and accept those payment methods. And we do that, right? 
Now, at the same time, these are consumers that are debit card consumers aren't used to credit and so on, right? So what we have to very be, uh, be conscious of is the way in which we underwrite these guys. So in Saudi, for example, where they're completely regulated by an operator in the sense that we operate within the central uh, central bank's sandbox. Uh, uh, and the way we kind of ensure accountability and responsible spending is in a bunch of ways, right? So one, just like credit cards, we do not have a minimum payment option, right? So when your credit card is uh, bill is due, you can just pay a minimum due amount and continue using that. BNPLs do not do that, right? So if your bill is overdue, you have to stop using the BNPL and you won't be allowed to make another transaction. This is another way of essentially ensuring that consumers don't go too deep into a debt trap uh, and are essentially able to pay back their dues. Um, but at the same time, you know, a lot of uh, uh, regulatory uh, oversight has come onto buy now pay later, which is a good thing for the industry because in a market like Saudi, for example, uh, we do report back uh, data to the credit bureau. This helps them build out credit scores for customers that haven't ever been, uh, you know, brought into the fold of credit. You know, Saudi is a very interest averse market. They don't like credit cards due to cultural norms and whatnot. Uh, and, you know, it's important for, the economy as a whole to be able to score customers on credit, right? So that services can be offered for cheaper by the government to certain customers that pay back on time and certain customers that do not, of course, uh, end up losing out on certain benefits. Uh, so at the end of it, you know, it's uh, about not only about how buy now operators structure themselves, but how regulators are using this as a way to really further economies and build responsible behavior. Um, so yeah, while we do accept locally payment methods, it's important that you uh, are in line with cultural norms. Are you, uh, you're in line with the way the market operates and you're able to feed that data back to essentially further the ecosystem uh, and you know, help consumers and businesses alike. Thank you, Zain. I think it's, it's already been shown quite some ease because of the, the amount of growth that you had. I think recently you've received also um, a larger round of funding again to you know further in, in invest in that and make that happen. And I mean, who for whoever who doesn't know me, I'm I'm from Germany and you know living in the UAE now more than twelve years, but living in the UAE has also taught me a lot of um, cash flying out <laughs> at the beginning of a, of any period, whether that be rent, whether that be office, you know a lot of payments on, on the business side as a business owner for six years now we do we are very much aware of that all of us here and um, if you're looking over into European markets you allow much more you know slicing down payments so yeah we'd be excited to see how the UAE you know maybe governments could accept that or even you know in terms of rent payments so the future the future is uh, bright for Tabby and uh, excited to see what happens. But I think there's one more question from Azhar for you, Zain. So uh, maybe you can take that question, yes, please. For sure. Uh, on the regulatory side, uh, you know, just an update there, I think that might be useful is, uh, apart from using buy now pay later to basically better credit bureau data, there's a lot of interest, as you said, on using it for government services, right? So interestingly, one of the investors that came on board is Mubadala, which is UAE Sovereign Wealth Fund. Uh, and one of the things that they're doing is trying to incorporate these into a lot of government services like business licenses and so on. Uh, so yeah, I think that will continue to sort of, you know, expand and it's kind of something you can't ignore, right? It eventually, uh, uh, the, uh, the benefit of a payment method is to be available wherever consumers want it to be. And eventually the market catches up to that need and, you know, whatever gaps are yet to be filled eventually end up filling out by themselves. Um, and that's already kind of evident because, you know, in terms of share of checkout, we're already averaging around anywhere from 15 to 30% share of an e-commerce merchant sale, uh, which is a significant chunk of their volumes being processed through buy now pay later. So I think, you know, it's a momentum that will keep going. Um, I'm also going to put in a link on the chat here about, um, about essentially how merchants are leveraging this as a conversion tool itself, right? So to reduce drop-offs and so on. Uh, but I'll get on to Azar's question, which is a fair point, is what does this essentially cost you, right? Uh, now I can speak for Tabby, uh, uh, and the way we've kind of gone about it is uh, in line with how uh, we're able to deliver ROI for our merchants, the return on investment. So typically the pricing would be around the 5% mark, uh, 
uh, it could be lower or higher, but it does, you know, typically vary based on the risk of the use case that we see. What is the customer going to buy? What the customer's X segment could look like, right? So it could go higher or lower depending on the risk, which is typically based on the industry that you operate in that correlates to risk and the volumes, right? So it really differs based on these, but, you know, on average, that's where it kind of sits. Um, and that effectively means that it's a few percentage points higher than what you pay for credit card adoption in the region, right? So a two, 3% higher is essentially what you pay. Um, and we, you know, we get into the benefits of that and, you know, experiences beyond BLs, uh, retailers have had with buy now pay leaders, uh, in the, uh, later half of the session, I believe, but I hope that answers your question for now as well. Okay, perfect. Thank you for that, Sane. Thank you for your um, feedback and the overview. So we'll jump on our next um, question. So basically, how can BNPL Tabby help my e-commerce business and can I expect more sales? So I think this, is, this was pretty much discussed by our experts. So we could jump on the next question. And now quickly, I think Zain also what Zain mentioned in terms of the um, beta program and learning testing, I think there will be more statistics out, the more merchants obviously use the solution. And uh, we can only, you know, emphasize that this is actually showing more sales. It's increasing basket volumes, doesn't Im uh, immediately increase order numbers, but it does increase interest and it's becoming the new norm. It's not like, uh, you know, earlier before COVID, it was like, oh, I need a website, you know, oh, let me be online. I'm, you know, I'm more adventurous. I'm more forward thinking. And nowadays it's not that you are online, you have to be online, but with a better user experience, with a better marketing, with a better positioning. And I think that's where Tabby just fits in so nicely. Yeah, I can actually share my screen and show some statistics if yeah. uh, that helps. Um, happy maybe, to do that. Maybe Zane, while you do that, you could also explain the onboarding process just briefly and then we can capture that question as well at the same time. Absolutely. Cool. Um, so yeah, I think let's cover the full sale life cycle, right? Like what do you do to start onboarding and what do you get at the end of it? Um, so I think, look, the onboarding process is fairly simple, just like with any payment method. I mean, we're not a bank, nor are we a payment gateway. So the documentation is a bit smaller. Uh, we operate as a tech first company, uh, similar to, you know, uh, a lot of the folks, uh, present on the call here. But I think, so there is a, a four or five pager agreement at the end of it, just like you'd expect for a partnership that details out terms that we discuss with you, when you get paid, how you get paid, uh, you know, so on and so forth, which markets you operate in. So for example, Tabby operates in UAE, Saudi, Kuwait, Bahrain, and we're soon launching in Egypt. Uh, and at the end of it, what you would do is sign the same agreement template with the legal entity. Uh, so we just replace the legal entity depending on the market we operate in. In parallel, there's a technical discussion to be had, which thanks to Shopify is not that big of a hassle, right? It's just about uh, a few clicks, a half an hour call, and you would be live by the end of it, right? And what you get in return is the experience that, for an example, you can check out the link that I posted on the website, but effectively, uh, you know, the implementation is consisting of a few parts. One is switching on the payment method, which you can do very with a lot of ease through Shopify. We'd help you out with steps to do that. And then what we do is help you essentially modify your theme, right? So um, um, if I may share my screen, Anna, I think that might make it a bit easier. So I'll go ahead and do that. Let me know if you guys can see it. So what you see on the screen essentially is the theme part of it that I was explaining, right? So we're live as a payment method on their payments page, but this is something that we, we would do for you in parallel. Uh, and what the primary upside of doing this is what you see on the screen here, right? So the goal of this is not just to be a payment method, but to help you convert customers, right? To prevent drop-offs and to eventually get them to the payment page so that they're comfortable with spending more, right? Now, the decision to spend more or less actually starts a lot before you reach a customer reaches the payment page, right? So this is an example of me going to a website. I've clicked on a product uh, from Boohoo. I see a price here. Now, just below that, I see all four interest-free payments of exactly this much. So what this is used, uh, so the way retailers use this is as a conversion tool. It subconsciously creates a benchmark in the consumer's mind that this was the price, but it's now just this much. So I can actually add this product to my cart, proceed to checkout and get moving. And 
showing this early on in the journey also could you know make a customer add more products to the cart to their cart than they earlier wanted and so on and so forth right so that's where now i'll jump into the impact side of things and um, i'm going to cite a case study that we conducted with one of the large partners that we operate with in the region um and what you essentially see is an impact on two three fronts the obvious one is your average order value right because the consumer now only pays 25% of their full purchase they are likely to spend more they get comfortable with spending more uh and they're less likely to essentially drop off right and what we've seen is an increase in average order value compared to every single payment method that the partner worked with so compared to cards and cash on delivery which is a big cash on delivery is a big you know uh, uh need for shoppers in the market but also very annoying for a business owner uh but we jump into that in a bit but average order value is a, a lot more different and a lot higher than what you see with credit cards and debit cards interestingly enough uh you also see a very visible impact on return rates uh and this is not something that we thought uh would be a value proposition for us uh you know but ended up being one uh when we conducted this case study we basically saw return rates being a lot lower on tabby when compared to cards and cash on delivery and that got us thinking so we went back you know did a few surveys call up a few customers and essentially dug into why that could be the reason and what we essentially narrowed down on was buyer's remorse i as a consumer am less likely to second guess my purchase i am less likely to want to regret that uh, you know to regret that purchase and as a result i am more likely to just keep the product right there's no reason for me to feel sorry for that purchase because i've just paid 25% for it right now and i'm not paying anything extra in terms of interest or convenience fees or anything to use this product and this has a huge impact on retailers economics right because if you look at the cost of a return it's ridiculous not only are you blocking an sku you're paying for delivery and then you're paying to get that product back to you when a customer returns all without having realized any revenue so what tabby ended up doing is essentially eating into a bit of a share of cash on delivery with a lot of these retailers boosting average order values and these customers that bought with tabby had a much less lower returns rate when compared to other payment methods that consumers were using so this is an example of you know what you can expect in terms of uh you know going live i would however in the interest of you know the business owners and uh uh, uh product owners present here like to highlight that this would vary the impact on returns for example is you know linked to a bunch of factors right it's not just tabby so the exact upside you see based on returns and so on will vary uh but one thing guaranteed is an increase in average order values uh and i think that's the key value add that you can expect as a retailer i think uh, uh, thank you zain and that's covering exactly what uh, based what we've said right what we've earlier said in terms of you know studies and trends where where the retail goes it's definitely a large addition and i know we've seen also competitors coming now in the, into the field yet we do believe on a you know on a consumer journey and on integratability and the way it functions and the way the growth goes we definitely know that tabby was uh, not for the only reason the first that they've been the first but they're also the best and i think that's what aligns with uh, shopify's and creative 971's vision it's not always to be the first in that case creative 971 and, and tabby are similar we've actually been the first tapping in those markets but we also been I would say very careful you know also in the R&D and making sure that the the transfer and the progress of wherever merchants needs go as they change very daily or, I mean daily is maybe exaggerated but you know if you would take a Shopify meetup 2 years ago or even a year and a half ago like peak pandemic it looks different than now it looked different than 3 years ago so yeah we we are adapting with you guys and we are um you know agile team to make that happen in order to actually benefit the merchants the most and i think that's where we have that sweet spot and uh, yeah i think in 5 minutes we're about to close so anna let us know if there's one more question waiting for the audience sure so um what are the merchant and customer risks or challenges in using a buy now pay later solution i think we've also covered some of it initial on the initial discussion so experts please feel free to add some points in this as well yeah i can perhaps you know make it short and crisp here so look 
for you as a merchant uh what i would look at if i were you is you know uh, basically a few things the consumer experience is top priority right and that correlates very heavily to what are the locally preferred payment methods that the buy now pay later accepts right that directly impacts can a buy now pay later cater to that particular consumer who prefers a particular payment method like a debit card or a particular credit card or debit card scheme to be able to use buy now pay later that will you know impact you as a merchant experience more than perhaps the consumers because uh you don't want support tickets coming to you around why can't i use this and so on and so forth right so the consumer experience has to be looked at closely how long is the checkout how short it is how clear and user friendly it is and what are the locally preferred payment methods that it comes with for the consumers uh i think there's an upside and a downside it's a double edged sword uh it is credit for people that do not like credit cards and do not have access for credit but at the same time uh you know while it helps you not go into a debt trap it does mean that i as a consumer if i am late on my payments will still pay a late fee to tabby right or any buy now pay later uh and that is something to be conscious of and the fact that if i do incur that late fee and do not pay back i may be reported to the credit bureau and that could impact my credit score so these are the pros and cons from my perspective for uh, both businesses and consumers i'll let others weigh in if they want to thank you very much yeah we are at the end of the questions right anna yes yeah so this this will be our question and answer if any of you guys has a little bit of questions aside from that so feel free to to keep us let's say until 2 to 3 minutes just a quick question so that until we have our experts in here I think we've we've allowed a lot of questions already in the session, so from from my from my side, it's totally fine. I think maybe one um, sentence before we end. There is some benefits um, with Tabby, and maybe Zane, you can quickly explain it, and Anna will share to the attendees after the event is over, so you will get an email with the goodies. For sure, uh, you know, as a, a note of thank you uh, to all of you guys here and for Creative Nine Seven for the work that they're doing. Um, any of uh, you guys or clients of Creative Nine Seven One essentially can avail an exclusive offer with Tabby, which allows you to try Tabby out for three months at a very discounted rate of three and a half percent, and you know, see the benefits for yourselves. Uh, and yeah, we uh, uh, Anna would be getting in touch with you guys. Uh, and just making sure you have that handy in case you are interested in trying it out thank well, you so thank much you. So thank you zen and thank you for all the attendees and thank you of course for all our speakers and panelists thank you anna thank you zen and thank you gary we'll see you with the next shopify meetup and for now everyone who is um, going over to enjoy the ramadan period please be safe and um yeah and any questions needed communications i think olivia and the rest of the team will get in touch for those who wanted to be contacted for those who need a specific chat uh, probably with ourselves on e-commerce front or with tebby on the buy now pay later solution uh, which would be zane uh, please reach out uh, send us a message or an email i think anna the next slide should show the contact details as well and then um, again, this is a recorded session, so we will stream it and send you the link also to YouTube if you want to share it with friends that you think they couldn't attend today. And um, yeah, closing it off very nicely on point at 6 p.m. Wishing you all a nice evening over here in the UAE from wherever else you edit into. And um, yeah, speak soon then. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.